Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Janet. I'm working through the King James's Bible. Today I am in the Book of Chronicles, Part 2, working through chapters 5 to 7 today. So those are the chapters I'm going to be summarising right after this interval. <laughs> So in chapter 5 we begin with the Ark itself that has been in the tabernacle all of this time while they have been travelling in the wilderness. The Israelites are finally bringing it to its resting place in the temple. So the temple is now complete. King Solomon then brings in all of the items that David had prepared and made ready for this temple. So he'd been getting things ready so he brings all of those items into the temple. And this includes silver and gold and furnishings which are placed in the treasuries of the house of God. Solomon then brings together all the heads of the different tribes, all the chief officials of all the armies and the elders to witness this ark being brought in by the Levite priests. They were the only ones who could handle it, so they are the ones who are going to bring it to Jerusalem to place it in its resting place between these two huge cherubims. That's where it's going to stay. So everything that's been in the tabernacle as well is brought into the temple and a feast which it says is on the seventh month is brought together to celebrate this magnificent occasion. So the ark is then placed in its position and this is where it, it goes, right between those two cherubims as you can see there, that little box underneath is the ark. Inside of that is the two tablets that Moses brought down from Mount Sinai. Now the priests themselves are only allowed to go into this area where the ark is placed. Nobody else can go in there. That is written down in the book of Moses. So that is what happens. When they come out of that area, trumpets are blown, the musicians play. It's a huge celebration. Now as this music reaches its peak, a cloud fills the entire temple. And this is a cloud of the Lord. Now it builds to such an extent that the priests have to leave because they cannot carry on their ceremonial duties, you know, that they would have carried on because this cloud is just everywhere. Solomon then blesses the Lord as this happens, saying, you know, here you are, I have made you this place now to rest. He also goes on to bless God himself for being with the Israelites from Egypt all the way through the wilderness and now to this resting place in the temple for being there for his father and for him and then he blesses God and all of the Israelite people and then he proclaims to God I have finished now building your temple and I am here to reign over Israel as you have chosen. Solomon then comes towards the altar that has built this huge altar in the temple he then goes down to his knees and he raises his hands in the air and he praises God and thanks him for all that he's done. Then he asks God to keep his promise, for God to remain in the temple and to answer all those who seek him, who pray to him, who pray towards this temple and to please forgive them for their sins. For if these people are praying and they're repenting, he wants God to forgive them. He also mentions that if any oaths are made between the people and God, that he ensure that they are fulfilled. He also asks if the Israels have sinned and they repent for God to guide them home. He also asks God to answer them if there has been a plague or a famine, you know, to come back and help the people. Plus any defeats over their enemies, he wants God to come and save them. This is when they all repent, when they know they've done wrong, when they have gone far beyond their sins, because this has happened many times in the past. So he is like trying to cover those tracks because obviously they keep doing it. Solomon also asks any foreigners that believe in our prayers towards God for their prayers to be answered, for their sins to be repented, to be forgiven. Also to the people who have gone into captivity, who've been captured by their enemies, if they repent to have them saved and brought back to their homeland, the promised land. And then Solomon closes this magnificent prayer saying, Arise, O Lord, to your resting place. Do not turn away from your anointed one, which is basically meaning himself, Solomon, the anointed king. 
And this is where we close chapter 6. In chapter 7, we see God come down in a huge fire from heaven. And this consumes the whole temple, but nobody can now enter the temple. And the people now see God's presence and they bow their heads and worship to the God of Israel. And they praise him. Then many sacrifices are made. They make 22,000 sacrifices of bulls and 20,000 sacrifices of sheep. Then they have a huge feast and music and a celebration. And this lasts for seven days. Then on the eighth day, they have a sacred assembly. And then on the 23rd day of the seventh month, Solomon allows the people who have come and gathered from many different areas of Israel, he allows them then to return to their homes. And there we have it. The temple is successfully completed. The ark is in its resting place and the Lord has finally arrived. God then appears to Solomon for a second time. This is the second time in his reigning as king over Israel that God has appeared to him. And he's coming to answer that prayer, the big prayer that he made. And he said he will listen to the people. He will forgive them if they repent, if they follow his laws and rules and statutes. Then yes, he is going to do as Solomon has asked and they will be forgiven. Then God replies to Solomon's personal prayer about looking out and being by Solomon's side, the anointed one. And again, he says, yes, he'll be there for him as long as he keeps his laws, statutes and all of the rest, the commandments. Then all will be well if that's what he does. But, and this is the caveat, if he fails to follow God's laws, if he starts worshipping false gods, then he and the people will be cast out of the land, of the promised land, and the temple will be destroyed. It will just end up devastated. And it will be there as a sign to show all of the nations that Solomon, the people, had failed to follow his guidance, his rules. And it was a lesson that this is what would happen if they sin and if they go against God's laws. And this closes our final chapter for today. So a big warning that, yeah, all will be well following the rules of God. The book that Moses wrote so thoroughly following God's guidance. It's all laid down there. They know what is right and what is wrong in God's eyes. So as long as they follow that, all will be well. And we will see in upcoming chapters if that is the case. I mean, we do know what happens. If you've read the book of Kings, you know what's happening. We're getting into more detail here in the book of Chronicles, the final part. So we know that the things aren't always going to go well. There is going to be a drop because Solomon is not that perfect king. So if you want to find out more, if you want to get more of a recap on what happens to Solomon and the rest of the Israelites, then keep following on with these videos which will be upcoming soon. So thank you for being here, thank you for your time and I'll see you again for more chapters in the book of Chronicles 2. Take care now, bye. Mm -hmm.